Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. So, um, like I said in yesterday's video, wanted to talk about batch size and charge temp. Okay, for example, let's just let's just take a coffee here. So we have an Ethiopia Guji. Ethiopia. Okay, already I'm thinking high elevation, maybe I have to charge a little higher. And then whoop, I see this natural right here. I'm like, oh, it's nat natural. Naturals are a process of coffee, right? So you have washed, which is like the most, I think, known about, where they wash the coffee of all of its like mucilage, mucilage, mucilage that stuff. And it's really clean and it's really kind of a green color when they present it to you. Green coffee or raw coffee will look green. Natural coffee will look kind of like a yellowish, kind of yellow brown. Uh, because they let this, the, um, the cherries kind of like ferment on there, stay on there, and they dry them out like that. Um, and they let them kind of just dry out a little bit. So that's why they take on a little bit more of that yellow color. You can read up more on it. I'll put a link in the description or something. So this process at the roaster typically means that you're not going to be using a very aggressive fuel application because it could easily scorch the coffee. Um, you have to be a little bit more gentle with it, okay? So that gentle fuel application or a slower moving um, curve, so to speak, is something that's in my mind as I approach this new coffee, right? The next thing I would do is First, I would see how it kind of just behaves as a sample roast. So tip, like, like right now, I would do 100 grams um, in my big, you know, one kilogram roaster. And I'm running the roaster at 10% capacity. So I have to go like very, very, very gentle. Probably like 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and where does that number come from? It comes from just experience or the last roast that I did. You know, you can pick a sort of like standard uh, charge temperature for your roaster, okay? So a lot of my context or my experience is obviously gonna come from my experience with my roaster. That's how you're also going to be assessing what charge temperature and batch size that you're gonna do for your coffees as you approach new coffees all the time. Typically, you've already started, you've already roasted something. So you have some experience already if you're already watching this video. So based on your experience and some of the roasts that you already did in the past, you can just think back to how did a certain coffee, particularly in my case, like we're talking about a natural, how did a natural behave the last time that you roasted at whatever temperature? So in my case, I'd be like, well, Typically when I roast my Brazil natural, I'm choosing like a 350 charge and I'm soaking it. Soaking is meaning, uh, just means that I don't have any fuel on for the first minute in the roast. Okay, um, so that's my previous experience with roasting a full batch natural, right? So I would work from there and I'd be like, hmm, okay, if, that's, if it's 350, but then because this coffee is from Ethiopia, I would kind of like think to myself, well, it's a little bit, you know, um, higher density. We have a um, elevation here, uh, 1950 to 2200 elevation, right, meters. Um, so I'm like, mm, it's kind of dense. So, and then my decaf also runs at like a, a 370, right? Um, and I'm like, well, okay, so I'll just, I'll just choose one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pretty safe for my, in my experience with my roaster to start at like a, a 360, something like that, you know, and see how, uh, see how that goes. My next signal to tell me if that was too hot or too low is the turning point. Okay. So, um, and this is how I do it, all right? I don't know if it's true 100% all the time for everybody, anywhere, all the time for every machine, but it's true for me, okay? <laughs> so say I have a full batch size of this Ethiopia Guji Natural, all right? And um, um, I'm choosing 360 degrees Fahrenheit to charge. 
So I charge it, the beans hit the drum, everything's rotating, everything's fine. I have a, um, just by the by, this is not a really big deal, but I'm just gonna throw it in there for you if you're following along. Air is at a low setting, okay? We're not gonna talk about air yet, but air is at a low setting. I'm going to observe the beans. Since this is a new bean, I could either do a soak, which means no fuel for the first minute, right? Or I can choose to do no soak, which is lately what I've been doing, which is uh, fuel right from the get-go. Um, and in this case, I would have it at uh, full power. I would have it at full power. Why would I have it at full power? Because even though it is a natural, it's a particularly dense bean, so I'm thinking it, it can take more energy. Now, if it was like a 900 to 1100 meters density, or um, not density, elevation, I would think this coffee is less dense. Therefore, I would maybe not be so aggressive with my heat application and maybe I'd only be up, uh, I'd only crank my fuel to like 80%, 90%, something like that, okay? If it doesn't turn around in less than two minutes, you potentially are going to roast this coffee a little bit too long. I'm gonna make that general statement, but for me, that's been pretty true. Um, so if my turning point in my coffee, and I'm monitoring this, is a little bit over two minutes, I feel like that's way too long. And what happens is it's gonna be like a domino effect, like everything that I've been wanting, like having a uh, middle phase during this time and having a development phase during this time is going to be pushed down the line, right? It's going to be later than what it actually is because I took so long to get the coffee to turn around, right? Because maybe the charge was too low or the batch size is too big, okay? So you can use both of these. In the beginning of the roast, we haven't even got to the middle phase or the last phase, but in the beginning of the roast, which you should nail first and feel confident about first, which is, did I turn around quick enough at the right time? Not quick enough, but like at the right time, because not all coffees need to turn around at a minute. You've got to cup them and see like what, what's up. I think generally, generally, if we're roasting coffee for specialty, um, if it's under two minutes, that's ideal. Um, that means the coffee is absorbing the energy quick enough and is going to be able to move through the rest of the phases and, and hit certain targets that are ideal, that are more ideal, okay? I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to go too much more into that. And that's a super general kind of thing that I'm observing right now. And uh, that's something that I also want to experiment with, which is like, hmm, I wonder if I get my turning point to be around a minute or so. Will I be able to bring more acidity into these cups? Can I bring more nuance? Because it feels like if they're turning around uh, all around two minutes or even later than two minutes, like say two minutes, 15, something like that, um, which I think is really late, um, maybe I'm baking it too much. I'm not enabling myself to uh, present these coffees that are not cheap, right? Um, in like all of these really nice nuanced flavors. So Jared says, peach, cherry, floral, lemon, acidity, syrupy, body, well-balanced. So if I don't turn around fast enough and I actually push this roast a little bit longer than it actually uh, is intended for, then I could bake all these flavors out. I could roast all these flavors out. Does that make sense? So, and but those are the things you gotta test in the cup not just because I told you so, okay? So you gotta test it for yourself, see what that's up, that's like, and um, and then see, like, is turning around at two minutes a bad thing? You've gotta test it. Is turning around at a minute the best thing? You gotta test it, I don't know. <laughs> and is it the best thing all the time for every coffee? Probably no, right? It depends what you're trying to do. So as a roaster, you need to have more of a destination. You know, you need to have a destination like on GPS. You need to know where you're going so you can take those turns and you can exit here and you can take this detour if you need to or whatever it is, but you need to know where you're going. Otherwise, you're just going all around in circles and then maybe a year later, like myself, still feel hella lost. 
<laughs> All right, so that's my advice to you on that. And that is charge and batch size, okay? So I don't wanna to go too deep. We already went pretty deep, I think. Um, but that's how I would approach it at this point in my time in learning, at the time of making this video, okay? Uh, I'm gonna change, I'm probably gonna change my opinion at some point. And you should change your two based on your own testing and results, right? Right, okay, so. Um, that's it for today and we're gonna see you tomorrow for another video. We're gonna talk about Manipulating after we turn so after we turn turn around We're gonna talk about that upcline in the ROR and then when we start to descend and start to lower fuel We'll talk about that in the next video. Okay Cool. See you in the next one